So now that we've seen the film, I want to introduce you to Sean Olson. I'm Sean Olson, director of Max Winslow and the House of Secrets. And we have Sidney McKell, who played Max Winslow, and Tanner Buchanan, who played Connor Lawson in the film. Sean, I'm so glad that you made this family film. But can you tell us more about why it's important to you? Yeah, I mean, I really feel like... I'm a father of two. I have a I have a seven year old and a nine year old, and you know they're generally watching you know TV and films like sometimes without us in the room, and I really wanted to make films, um, especially in in this genre, that you know you could turn it on in the background and not have to worry about what they're watching. So. Uh, we really tried to make it clean and accessible for kids, but also something that, as a parent, we end up having to like watch a movie that we really don't like. Right? We think it's you know cheesy, mm -hmm. the, the the characters, the lines, the dialogue, or, or something. And so I wanted to make films that not only the kids can enjoy, but the parents could enjoy as well. And that like kind of harkens back to a lot of the movies like that I grew up watching, and I like the Back to the Futures or like the ETs, uh, the Goonies, those types of films. And you know that's kind of where our angle was: was you know let's make movies movies like that that everybody can enjoy together. And that is a rare gift that you possess. Not very many can pull that off. Oh, well, thank you. And so we were extremely excited to be able to present your film. Tanner and Sydney, there are several important messages embedded in the film. Who am I? Self-esteem. Would you agree it's an important message for young people? Definitely. I mean, everybody has their, like, very particular circumstance of what they're dealing with. Um, but it's all very relatable and it all kind of speaks to the time that we're in, especially with Jade and social media and thinking that that's all you're going to focus on and then realizing that it's not and like just kind of finding yourself and all of our characters got to do that. I completely agree. It's because each character you realize kind of has an underlying uh, problem within their life. And you can really clearly see that. And that's what the whole movie is about, is trying to find out and, and learn from yourself and learn how maybe you can better yourself and become a better person and, and figure out who you are as a person. Uh, like my character, for instance, is, is dealing with trying to appease his parents and do what they want uh, him to do. And he learns that he can't do that. He has to make himself happy in his life and do what he truly loves, which is, which is music. I also think, you know, like us being a family film, it's the type of movie that people need right now. They need something that's a little bit more hopeful. They need something that's, um, you know, that's a little bit more uplifting. Um, there's so many things going on in the world that are completely out of our control. And, you know, we're all kind of in the same situation together. And, you know, I think the more positive, um, the positivity we can put out there, even especially with film, um, I think the better. I agree. I understand that originally Max had been male and then it shifted to being a female character. Can you address that and talk about yeah, it? Yeah, uh, it was one of those things that kind of came late in the process. We usually don't see female hackers in films. And um, I mean, the mm -hmm. one female hacker I think I, off the top of my head is like Angelina Jolie and hackers. But most of the time, the techie characters are always like the guys, like the Q and the James Bond movies and those types of things. So I thought it was kind of a different twist on it that, you know, we could put a female character front and center. Really, the performance of Sydney epitomized like what our vision of the character was. Tanner, you played the guitar on the set. Were you a little bit nervous during this? Uh, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> I've played guitar for a very long time, and but I like to say I can sing, but I'm not a singer. Um, and I've never actually really performed in front of anybody before. And so it was very nerve wracking, not only performing in front of everybody, but the fact that it was going to be recorded and, and it's going to be around forever was even more <laughs> nerve wracking, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what he's saying. He's not a singer. He's definitely a singer. It was a very easy job to just sit there and be serenaded by him. I was like, okay, I guess this is the next hour. Let's go. 
One important question, obviously, would be the voice of mm. Haven. And how did you develop that? And what was your concept? Haven really evolved um, through the making of the movie. Originally, Jeff wrote the character, um, and its name was Hale, H-A-E-L. And as the movie kind of progressed, we're like, you know what? That sounds a little bit too much like 2001, like the HAL 9000. Um, and so as the movie progressed, uh, my original thought was, why don't we make Haven a young kid? And so we had many people audition for that. Um, even Anton, who plays um, Ethan Winslow, uh, tried out his voice for the character of Haven. Because I thought, you know, originally that Haven could almost be like best buddies with everybody. Like he's just another kid in the game. And, you know, when when Haven goes bad, it's like a kid who has a temper tantrum that kind of acts out on all the kids. But then, you know, we put the voice in, it wasn't menacing enough. Um, and I mean, Anton has a great voice and, and everyone else who auditioned had really, really good voices, but um, we had kind of decided to change directions and uh, a number of names came out um, for the voice. And one of them was um, Marina Sirtis. And I'm a big Star Trek The Next Generation fan. And, and when that name came up, I was like, oh my gosh, can we get her? That would be fantastic. Because she just, she has such a, an elegant voice, but also she could be very, very, you know, intense. And so we really, we tried out a bunch of different things with, with Marina. She tried out different accents. She tried her native accent. She tried a Cockney accent. She um, tried an American accent, a... Um, a Russian kind of accent. And then we really liked the elegance of her British accent. It elevated everything. I mean, when Haven came on, it was. <laughs> it was one of those things like we had it, you know, you get used to like a temporary voice. Cause when you're cutting the movie, um, actually Jeff, the writer, it was his voice in there for, for the entirety of post-production. And then um, we recorded Marina really late in the process. And once we had her voice in there, we're just like, wow, this movie feels so much cooler than it did before because, because of her voice. Tanner and Sydney, you had the opportunity of working with an incredible ensemble. Can you tell us a little bit about what it was like working with this cast? Yeah, it was, it was really uh, fantastic to work with everybody that was kind of the same age because I, I know from my experience, I've never gotten to experience that very much. And it was uh, really fun to get to know everybody and also have like these late nights and just, I mean, we kept to business quite a bit because we were on a timeline, but I think we definitely had a lot of laughs and, and uh, you know, messed around on set. And it was, it, it was just a really, really fun experience. Jason is very funny. He was like a real kid to be around on set. Like he just, he's a very funny person. He really <laughs> livened up the energy, made it easier. I know that you have a lot on your plate, but in between everything, you're forming a new company. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you would be willing to share some of that. Yeah. When I made the film Freddy, uh, one, of, one of the guys that helped out, Christian Beckman, he, he, he owns a company called Quantum Creation Effects. I had talked to him about, hey, would you design a robot? And we really hit it off. Uh, we had a great time on that film. And so we decided to go into business together. And so our company, Trash Panda, is a combination of um, my wife, Christian, his wife, and I. And the types of movies that we're going to make are genre-based films. We have a couple movies on our slate. One of them is called Paralyze. It's about two social media um, vloggers that are taping their last show and they're ready to leave this forest that they're at. They were doing their, their tape, their taping and this mysterious woman knocks on their door and needs help. And her boyfriend has been paralyzed. And so they go to try to help rescue this guy. And then things happen. Well, I loved your sensibilities with your characters, with the storyline and with the production. I just want to thank everybody for taking their time to watch Max Winslow in the House of Secrets. It's a labor of love for me and all of the people involved. And we really, really appreciate your support. If you liked Max Winslow, please go on our Instagram page, our Facebook page at Max Winslow Movie. 
and leave us your comments. You can also go to IMDb and, you know, leave a rating, leave a score, leave a comment. Really appreciate you taking the time to check out our movie. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.